Hello and welcome to this introductory training to Touch Designer. This is going to act as a sort of crash course that will show you all the basics of how to use Touch Designer, how to get going, and it'll serve as a good starting point so that you can check out any of the other video trainings that I have available. So the first question that we have to kind of ask ourselves is, why learn Touch Designer and why stick with it? And I think it's an important question to ask because it's not exactly an easy software to learn. So for me, the answer is, is pretty simple. The first element is that Touch Designer is a really unique piece of software that's kind of unlimited in, in all kinds of different directions. You know, it can play as many movies as your hardware can support. It can generate as much content as your hardware support. Basically, Touch Designer is very hard to make it not be able to do something as long as you have either A, the hardware, or B, enough ability inside of Touch Designer to do what you want to do. It can take tons and tons of video outputs and inputs. I'm sure you've seen tons of projects where it seems like there's a hundred screens or projectors all being driven by some touch designer system. And you're like, how could that possibly even be possible? Touch designer is also unique because it can basically render content at almost any resolution, uh, high frame rates, low frame rates. It's super customizable in that sense. Uh, you can connect to all kinds of hardware, DMX, Artnet, and we'll talk about that in a moment. So you can basically connect anything to Touch Designer, and that's that's not only unique, but extremely powerful. And what brings a lot of people to Touch Designer is interesting because there's no one track to get into Touch Designer. So, you know, it's not just artists coming from a music background getting into Touch Designer. It's not just visual artists. It's not just kind of UI people. It's not architects. It, you know, all different people from all different kinds of fields and disciplines are bringing what they know, trying to use Touch Designer in its kind of unlimited capacity to do really interesting things. And because of that, you'll see as we start learning the different parts of Touch Designer, it has so many built in features, some of which you'll think, you know, who uses this? And that's because there's been so many different kinds of disciplines that have come to Touch Designer, been successful with it, asked for different features that it has a lot more breadth and capability than you might find from other uh, packages that might be really specific. Like, you know, Max MSP is really strong with audio and it, you know, it really crushes with the audio. But then but once you start to veer away from audio, some things become a little bit more difficult, whereas Touch Designer kind of can deal with so many different disciplines worth of data or programming or features. Another really great benefit of Touch Designer is its support for industry standards. So, you know, like I mentioned earlier, we, we can do DMX, Artnet, OSC, HTTP, TCP, UDP, I mean, WebSockets, Spout, UDT, MIDI, RTSP video streams. I mean, that's just a small number of some of the protocols and industry standards that are supported natively inside of Touch Designer. So this isn't like, you know, going to Unity and then hoping that some thing you download off the asset store has been updated and works still with the latest version of Unity. Otherwise, you know, did you just waste a bunch of money? We don't have any of that. You know, all, all of these things that I'm talking about are native operators inside of Touch Designer supported by the developers. So you know they're going to work and they're going to be reliable. There's also really great support for a lot of cutting edge hardware. I mean, when Vive came out, we were one of the first platforms to, to get native support. Same with Oculus, RealSense, the Vioso stuff. Uh, Connect 2, Leap Motions, basically like any of the cool hardware that you probably want to use in your installations, there's probably, again, native support for it. Not just, you know, hopefully some third party developer made a thing and it like still works and it, it got updated recently. None of that. Like we have all that support native. It's also extremely extensible. And what I mean by that is let's say that there was some kind of piece of hardware or software that you want to talk to that wasn't already natively in there. There's so many ways that you can add functionality to Touch Designer, whether it's through Python and you know doing scripting and, and talking to different web platforms on your own, whether it's through making uh, C++ operators, which allows you to kind of even create your own nodes for very specific purposes, or whether you're using something like GLSL, which is uh, the GPU shading language that you know we cover in a couple of our other trainings. One thing that's really good if you're coming to Touch Designer now is that the pre-built set of tools are growing you know, before there wasn't really that much. So you kind of had to build everything yourself, but now it's getting to a point where you have, you know, a lot of tools for 3D projection mapping, you know, similar to uh, map a mock from Open Frameworks, or we have things that are similar to Mad Mapper for doing kind of your 2D projection masking. 
we got a lot of stuff for edge blending, grid warping, you know, talking to different APIs, like so many tools exist now that can really help you get started. And those are covered also in our other trainings. With all that said, I mean, that sounds like a, a, a touch designer commercial by all means. And it really is a powerful program, but it isn't perfect just like anything else out there. Uh, a few things that we're going to talk about maybe in some other trainings are how to get around audio because audio can be a little bit tricky for new users. Um, it's also easy for beginners to hit optimization stumbling points. Like I said earlier, touch designer is kind of unlimited in all directions, but if you don't really have the skills to push it, you could easily fall short and end up thinking to yourself, wow, this program is, is not effective and it's really weak. How are all these other people able to get so much out of it? It really comes down to your skills as a developer. On top of that, the documentation can be quite frustrating. Um, I, I talk a lot about documentation and where to find specific documentations. And it's really important. The last thing I want to say is that you have to approach touch designer with a real self-learning attitude. You can't come to touch designer and think that everything's going to come down on a silver platter because a lot of the time you'll be figuring out new things and new ways to do things on your own. And having that attitude of self-learning and, and problem solving and getting through things will really put you in the mindset to be successful. Otherwise, frankly, you're probably just going to be frustrated and quit. So with all that said, let's get started at looking at the basics.